In this data set, I look at return on equity for companies broken down by industry. You might say, what's a return on equity? Again, going back to a familiar device, the accounting balance sheet, any business has only two ways of funding itself. It can borrow the money debt, or it can raise money from equity investors, which of course, if they get a residual claim, which is equity. The return in equity looks at what equity investors get as a return for their investment. Now to measure this return equity, of course, I need to get a first a measure of earnings to those investors. And the simplest measure of earnings is net income. Remember, return in equity is an accounting measure. So if you're saying net income is not cash flow, I agree with you, but an accounting return is based on accounting earnings. So look at net income. Now, I scale that net income to what the accountants measure. Again, this is an accounting measure, so we have to stay with the accounting measure of equity. I met, divide by the book value of equity. The book value of equity is what you see on the balance sheet. It includes retained earnings. It includes essentially the entire history of the company. That book value of equity can be negative for some companies. And those companies, you cannot compute return equity. But for most companies, there will be a book value of equity reflecting their collective successes and failures over their history as a company. Net income divided by book value of equity is return equity. And you say, why would I care? Well, you might care because it becomes a simplistic. Simplistic is the key word measure of how good the management of a company is. And here's why. The cost of equity is what equity investors need to make on their investment. It's what you use in the cost of capital. So when I say the cost of equity for a company is 9%, I'm expecting you to deliver more than 9%. Simplistically, I would expect you to take projects that earn a return on equity on accounting basis that exceeds 9%. So one measure of quality of management is to compare the return in equity to the cost of equity. You can also compare the return in equity for a company to the industry average to see how well or badly a management is doing relative to other companies in its peer group. So you can either compare to the cost of equity or you can compare to an industry average. Now, some people use the return in equity that they compute from looking at past data as, as a measure of forecasting the future. So if a company's earned a 20% return equity, they might decide that that's what they can continue to make. There's, there's nothing wrong with doing this, but be very clear about what you're assuming. You're assuming that the future projects for the company will resemble their past projects, at least in terms of delivering accounting returns and equity. Finally, the return equity for a company can be high because it has great projects. It can also be high because it's an average projects and uses a lot of debt. You're saying, how would using debt help me? Well, the return equity for a company can actually be decomposed into return on invested capital, which is what you make on your project without borrowing money, plus a debt effect. The debt effect is captured with a debt to equity ratio that measures how much debt you're taking on and how much of a benefit you get from that debt, which is captured with a spread between what you make on your projects and your cost of borrowing. So very simply put, if you borrow a debt, dollar of debt for every dollar of equity and you earn a return on capital of 10%, while borrowing at 4%, you're in effect adding 6%, that's a 10 minus 4% to your return in equity. So people look at return equity for lots of different reasons. And that, that's the reason I've created this data set with returns in equity. Now, of course, there are choices I had to make in computing the return equity that you will see in this data set. First on net income, I had to decide whether to use the actual reported net income or net income before extraordinary items or even normalize the net income by looking at an average net income across time. For the book equity, I could take the book equity at the start of the period, at the end of the period, and average over the period. Here are the choices I've made, and I've stayed consistent over the 30 years I've been reporting this number. I look at the net income as reported. Now, this is after extraordinary items. I look at the book equity at the start of the fiscal year. So I divide the net income in the last 12 months, which is what I have available to me on January 1st of each year. And I divide by the book value of equity at the start of the fiscal year. Net income divided by book value of equity gives me a return equity. Now, of course, for individual companies, book equity can turn negative, nothing I can do about it. And for those companies, I'd report are not meaningful for the return equity. But for the industry averages that you see, I, I'm able to aggregate the net income of all of the companies in the grouping and the book equities for all of the companies, including the negative book equity companies to come up with an aggregated return in equity for the companies in a sector. So I hope you found the session useful and thank you very much for listening.